A few months back in Avengers Infinity War, we saw the Earth's mightiest heroes go up against their greatest threat yet. But what happens when the Avengers need some defending? Today on the show. Good morning, Scallywags! Joppo's joining us today. Yes! We got uh, we got a, got a D sandwich here on, on the show. Yay! <laughs> and uh, here recently, there's finally been some, uh, some rumor mills sparking up that the Netflix MCU characters may officially be joining the MCU at some point. That would be nice. And of course, we're getting the Fox characters, the X-Men, the Fantastic Four, all those guys are eventually going to be joining us as well. But uh, these are some great characters, got some great stories and stuff going on, and we we want to see yeah we yeah. want to see them fighting alongside you know, the likes of Captain America and Iron Man and all those guys. So I mean, yeah, they're just as good of characters as any. Yeah. yeah. So uh, let's we're going to discuss today about uh, how how we think that that could potentially be done. All right. How do we uh, include the Netflix characters into the MCU? Well, I think. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to kick off by reaching for the low-hanging fruit here. And no, that is not a racial term. Low-hanging fruit means the easiest to grab. And this is what it is. And that is how to bring Luke Cage mm-hmm. into the MCU. Now, at the end of Black Panther, we saw Chala mm-hmm. was like, okay, we're going to open up Wakanda, and he's going to open his educational centers... So now he's becoming part of the Avengers. The Avengers are based in New York. So that means Chala is going to want to open one in New York. Now he has said he has his war dogs in every major city in the U.S. So got some good thunderstorms oh yeah. going on today. If you guys can hear some thunder rolling, yeah, every yep. once in a while. Thor approves. Yeah. <laughs> So, uh, and so now the war dogs, you're, you know, T'Challa is going to want to open his education centers in areas that is going to have the highest concentration of people of color, which in New York is where? Harlem. So, of course, his war dogs are going to tell him about the hero of Harlem, a.k.a. Luke Cage, the man with the unbreakable skin. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Now, the timeline of where the Defenders happen, um, we know it's after the Shatari invasion, so it's after the Avengers. Uh, they've mentioned the Scovia Accords, so we know it takes place after Civil War, but before Infinity War. Mm-hmm. Which we haven't seen the new seasons yet of each of these shows no. to see if any of them are affected by the snap. Yeah, well, so... Well, which hopefully they will bring that in. Yeah, so far, um, the most recent one is season two of Luke Cage, mm-hmm. and the Scovia Accords are mentioned in this as if it could be a big thing, so we know that's where the timeline is at now. So now, of course, with Luke Cage... Um, Chala will definitely be showing up to introduce himself to Luke Cage. And thankfully, since Chala is going to be a well-known figure, we're not going to have that trope of two heroes fighting to figure out. Sure. You know, yeah. Oh, hey, wait, we're both heroes. And this streamlines into other characters getting introduced. For example, uh, Misty Knight, who is currently Luke Cage's girlfriend, she has her cybernetic arm now. Well, because, because there aren't enough cybernetic arms in the MCU. Yeah, and, and, we <laughs> and uh, everybody has them, right? I mean, it's pretty. He much. has a cybernetic arm. You just don't know it. Well, it's I guess like Winter Soldier. His is the left arm, and then Misty Knight's is her right arm. And oh, now that, we just need that, a foot and another yeah. leg, and we could create Voltron. Cable. Yeah, and then of course you know, Chala's uh, sister. Shiri? Shiri. Shiri, Shiri, yeah. Shiri. Yeah, she's going to see... Best character in the MCU, hands down. Yeah. Uh, she's going to see this arm, and she's going to be like, well, where did you get that from? Oh, buddy of mine, Danny Rand. And that's... Rand Technology. Yeah, Rand Technology. That, that's... Because that's where she got it from, so that could be a little segue mm-hmm. on that. Mm-hmm. Then, of course, since we're already on the subject of Danny Rand... Um, okay, we got Danny Rand, uh, the Immortal Iron Fist... Uh, son of Kunlun, 
Now, we got two possibilities on him. Again, these are theories. He is the son of Kunlun. He studied China, the mystic martial arts and all that. Who else do we know that studied mysticism? Hmm, gee, I don't know. In, uh, in, in, yeah. in, the, in the Far East. Steve. Yeah, Steven. Yeah, Steve, you know, they there, there could be some crossover there. And then, of course, Danny Rand, who Rand Technology. He is a philanthropist, a billionaire. Who, who else do we know? Yeah, yeah. Stark, Stark would have to buy. So, I mean, him any out. one of these characters could be could be used. I mean, and you could even do something just as simple as you know, you know, have have uh, you know Spider Man out doing a thing, and you know, when Matt Murdock shows up, yeah, you could have, uh, or or you could even do you know, uh, I mean, look at the Punisher for example. I mean, oh yeah, you know, have his introduction from the comic books was in a Spider Man comic yeah. book. So so there's always that. Or I, I think you know a, a subtle way to even kind of bring them in would even be through uh, uh, through like Karen Page or uh, yeah or Foggy mm-hmm. yeah you know I mean they're they're branching out into the other uh, kind of tying some of the other characters together yeah. within the Netflix Which, Netflix series yeah so and, and there's always that route and and that that would be a hilarious scene right there of because uh, of the defenders Matt Murdock is the only one really making an effort to keep himself secret mm-hmm. as Daredevil. So now I can see, like, Daredevil being brought in, and it's like, okay, um, we need you to sign, and S.H.I.E.L.D. saying, we need you to sign on to the Scovio Accords. Yeah. And Daredevil going, I'm going to need to look this over. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then Daredevil, a.k.a. Mac Murdoch, Avocado at Law, Watch the series; you'll get that joke. <laughs> um, just start, just throwing I, some first-class law wrangling on this, and just know, ripping apart. Personally, I would love to see something very subtle, like you know, say Avengers Four, for example. Uh, you know, there's another massive attack on on New York, so like Outriders show up again, or something, or you know, anything like that. Just a massive attack. Yeah, and so you're. You're flashing through all your characters. You've got, you know, Thor's over here fighting, and Captain America's over here fighting, and Spider-Man's over here fighting, and then all of a sudden it just cuts over, and oh, here's Daredevil, you know, beating up some people. And like, who's yeah. this guy? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Daredevil getting people out of the way, or um, like we had talked about, like a Daredevil little, on crowd control. <laughs> yeah, or like a, like a subtle little thing we saw of, like you know. Um, a car gets flipped over, and then just all of a sudden, there's Luke Cage just, ta-da, you know, catches. And it yeah. wouldn't even have like to be. Like, saves one of the heroes. Yeah, it wouldn't yeah. have to be like, they need to be an integral part. You could honestly go, you're in this one scene, so we can connect like you with this yeah. world. And just be like, That's well, all it needs to do. Yeah. It's kind of like. I was... really hoped we would have seen something like that in, in Avengers 3. I remember us talking about that before. Yeah. You know, yeah. Be like, you know, some. You know, the massive attack. We, we, when we first saw the, like the big ring ships over New York, we thought that there was going to be some kind of in the street massive, you know, creature battle. But of course, that's was safe for Wakanda. But like, you know, to see something like that where you just kind of scooting through, and even like in the background to just see, you know, Daredevil fighting something, someone, yeah. and just or, be like, oh, hey, or, you know, yeah, yeah. just or, just to it, be like, hey, they're here, you know, because. Yeah, it could be a lot of fun. Yeah, that's... I mean, they don't. It, the, the biggest part of it, and I think, the most successful part of introducing a movie character into the TV was Agent Coulson. Yeah, uh, I'm, yeah. I'm sorry, it just that to me is a success, 110 percent. And then to have well, and Nicholas, and, uh, Samuel Nicholas L. Jackson Cage. come in <laughs> a couple times Nick during Fury. Nick Fury <laughs> to just bring it in. And and reconnect it all. I I don't think it needs to be anything grandioso. No, I think it needs yeah. to be a little bit part. I would love but to see pa- like you were saying about the car getting flipped. Yeah. I would love to see something like that, like Hawkeye or Black Widow. You know, one of the human people. Like a car gets flipped over or whatever, and it's about to land on you. Oh god! And, and then all of a sudden, it just kind of stops, and there's Luke Cage there, yeah. like, or Jessica or Jessica Jones. Jessica Jones. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. Who the hell are you? You know. Yeah. And which, just which Jessica Jones would be hilarious for the MCU uh, because she's a fairly obscure character, but she is very powerful because she's actually technically a retired superhero. Mm -hmm. She was a C-list superhero that actually, if you go by the comics, went to Midtown High 
and had a crush on Peter Parker Mm -hmm. when she was in high school. And she got her powers because one day she was going to Disney World with her family because her dad was given an all-expense-paid vacation to Disney World by his boss, and that works, Tony Stark. Yeah. Um, and then a a truck of nuclear waste. Mm-hmm. Is that just like the trope in most yeah. Yeah. back in yeah. the, back in it, the seventies? Everyone. Well, it's it's the, the dangers of atomic energy, you yeah. know, type of when, thing. And well, in and fact, she would just have and it, she would have just been dead and poisoned. Experiment. Yeah, and then it flipped over, and she went into a coma, and then when she came out of the coma. She had superhuman strength and uh, a limited flight ability. That yeah, fabulous hair, yeah. which we haven't seen in in the. Well, we, we did see it. Did we? No, I yes. don't think we've seen. Well, it. what had happened was I she just when, jumped when, when she was when she was her superhero self when she was Jewel, no. her sealess superhero. She had she had greater control over her flight. Then she fought. Then she fought the Purple Man, and. When he mind David controlled made her, a perfect purple you know, man. Yeah. If you're way. someone who doesn't know comic books and you hear, and then Jewel fought Purple Man, and <laughs> 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 which, if you've seen Jessica Jones, Purple Man was played by David Tennant, but he wasn't purple, but he wore a lot of purple. He wore a lot of purple. Um, that uh, she developed PTSD from the experience and kind of retired from superheroing, and since she retired. She didn't use her flight abilities, so they kind of degraded. So now it's kind of like a... She went from a C to a D. Yeah, she yeah she has a... It's like a very controlled... Because practice makes perfect. <laughs> exceptional jumping ability. She can... Kind of like, like Superman used to have before he got OP. Yeah. yeah. She can, like, jump really well, and if she's falling, she can glide. And that's about it. She but spreads now her she's, wings like a flying squirrel. Yeah. <laughs> But she d- she does have a resistance to mind control now, but she still has her superhuman strength. Right. So, but, but uh, I, I think that the the car flipping thing would be the perfect, in my opinion, would be the perfect way, just because you know y- you have that human character. Luke Cage catches the car, whatever. They look up, who the hell are you? And then you can just simply cut to a scene with the Avengers meeting with the Defenders. Yeah. Yeah. It's like all you had to do is introduce one. Yeah. And yeah. you get the rest of them through that. Yeah, and then you get the whole, you get the entire Defenders, the Heroes for Hire. Yeah. You know, not only the big four, but you get like Colleen Wing, um, a Misty Knight. Uh, you there, you even have a lot of ground for bringing in the Punisher. Yeah. yeah. You know, because, I Which, mean, I, you know, the, they said, I guess originally they said that, uh, that there was a plan to have Moon Knight yeah. in Punisher Season 2, but now they're actually talking about introducing him. Via movies, mm-hmm. which I just man, I just I disagree with that. Forgot to my ring off. I just I just I disagree with that. I think he would be much more of an intriguing uh, television character with like an yeah. ongoing series. But but yeah, but you still get you can, and that would be another way if you want to bring him into the MCU. Fine, do it, yeah, do it through Frank. Yeah, because on the Punisher, you have the options of uh, there was at one point in time. Uh, the Punisher was War Machine. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and then, of course, there was another comic, and yes, it was a what if, but still Marvel, you know, still Marvel. Uh, the Punisher was Captain America for a while. Well, and even after Civil War, he was still the Punisher, but he wore a Captain America yeah. uh, uniform. But uh, but instead of you know, you know, you guys know the backstories on these characters and stuff. So uh, let's let's discuss uh, what are some other. Ways to bring them in. To the I think honestly, MC. one of the one of the better ways to bring him in, um, if you're not going to go the big blockbuster uh, team movie like Avengers, honestly, Spider Man would be a great way to bring Spider-Man, him in. Yeah, I think Spider Man would be a really good way, especially for Daredevil for, or Punisher. For, really yeah. for Daredevil oh, or yeah. Punisher, um, honestly, it could, it could be something as simple as well, like we always said, it just needs to be cameo or or team up. Hey, all of a sudden, Spider-Man's in Hell's Kitchen. Why is Spider-Man in Hell's Kitchen? He's Spider-Man. Yeah. Oh, well, wait. Let's see. Wait, wait. Who, who, who do we have that connects? <gasps> He's King a bald Pan. guy. He's a big bald guy. Kingpin. Yeah, Kingpin has issues with both Daredevil and the Punisher. Yep, so there um, you go. And Spider-Man. And Spider-Man. And Spider-Man. Yeah. Um, I really like the Wakanda thing, uh, tying in with Luke Cage, but... 
I still say if you're gonna if you're gonna do it and keep it kind of a small feel yet a big movie feel has got to be Spider Man. Yeah, your friendly neighbor. Somebody Spider Man would be the perfect MCU character to connect any of them. Yeah. And with, yeah. With, I think the one exception to that would be Black Widow with her you know her prior. Uh, you know, working with the military and being kind of the assassin and that type of thing, that in the comics she and Punisher have quite a history together. Yeah, oh, I, yeah. Black Widow and Hawkeye. Maybe, maybe that's Which Punisher is kind of the one that's off to the side. You too. know, maybe that's what happened in Budapest. Could be. Frank Castle was there. Could it's be. see, I mean, there's such a wide variety uh, variety of ways you can do that. You don't have to specifically doesn't stick to, to canon. Deal. Yeah, and yeah. it doesn't have to be a big deal. Yeah. I mean, you yeah. can be very very subtle ways. It would could be something as simple as Frank is is up sniping and and kills somebody and Widow just looks up, well who was that? We knew him from Budapest and that's all you had to do. Yeah. yeah. Oh my god, that would be awesome. That <laughs> just, I mean and you could go that it's kind of the cheesy route, but you could go the route of like, you know, you know, Black Widow and Hawkeye talking whatever. Well, we could use an extra set of hands on this. I know a guy. I know a guy. And, and then, what? Who do you know? They both just, Buddha, Buddha, or it's like it's like Buddha yeah, passed. hey, I know a guy. And then just like H- Hawkeye just looks at her, Budapest. Mm-hmm. She's like Budapest. And he's like, oh, and there you oh, go. God. Next thing you know, you flash onto the screen. You don't even have Which, to show his name, fig, his face. Just boom. And, and he's he's kind of the one. Like I said, he's a, he's the one that's off to the left. Like you know, all of the other Netflix characters are all the defenders. Mm, and then yeah. you've got the Punisher, who's just off doing. Punisher stuff. Yeah, yeah. Punishing. But he and, did uh, he did get tied in with Daredevil. Yes. Yes. Which so, that mean, was an still, awesome season. He's still too. there. Yeah. He's just off to yeah. the side. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I mean he would be the one that you might bring in somewhat separately. But I mean uh, but you wouldn't even have to bring all of them in at one time. No, you just I need mean, to establish having, they're there. Yeah, by having any one of them show up, you you know that the rest of them are there because they all exist in that mm-hmm. same yeah. world. And I mean, even though on the net, you know, the Netflix series has made it clear that they are in the MCU, they're just they're on the not other side the of the, They're on the other side of the umbrella. Yeah, it's kind of like Shield. I mean, Shield is part of the MCU, but yet it's not. <coughs> they're Hydra. doing, <clears throat> yeah, what? they're doing their own thing. Yeah, except for Hydra. Yeah. What did you say? No, I didn't say anything. I coughed. What are you talking about? <laughs> so, what do you guys think? What, what What would be your ideal way to uh, to bring the Netflix verse into the MCU? Put that down in the comments. Continue to like, share, and subscribe on our Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and, and here, and here and too, here. yeah, <laughs> yeah, and on the on the YouTubes, yes, on the YouTubes. You, you, you like that shirt? You like, you like oh, that's a nice looking shirt you got right there. The blue, the blue, mm-hmm. like the the blue. blue. yeah, the blue. You know, you know how they can get one of these? How, how can they get one of those? Well, they can go right here. Sorry, chap, if that hit you there, didn't mean to. No, that's I dodged. Are you good? Oh, okay. That's our Facebook page. Just uh, shoot us a private message on our Facebook page letting us know what colors you would like. That is color of the shirt itself, color of the text, because you can get whatever colors you like, yeah. and what size you'll need. 20 bucks for a short sleeve, 22 for a long. You can go ahead and pick up one of our fabulous hoodies since it's starting to get a little cool outside, mm-hmm. little, especially at nighttime. Yep. You get one of those for 25 and uh, we'll get that process right up for you. You know what day it is tomorrow, right? Tomorrow's our, our favorite day Friday? of the week. Well, it's, it's an extended weekend for you. I'm sorry. We need to go talk oh. some legal stuff. Uh-huh. Uh, we'll yes. see you then. Goodbye. Uh-huh. This is a coat hanger. This is your Russian clip of the day. Why? <laughs> 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 Hey guys, thanks for watching that video. We hope you enjoyed it. Yeah, and if you liked what you see, go ahead and click on our faces to go ahead and subscribe to get all of our Monday through Friday stuff. Indeed, and here's a couple of links down below that you can follow to watch more shows like it. Tons of great content right here at Scallywag Productions. We'll see you tomorrow.